Welcome to Starting Scripture, and today is day 239. We are reading in the book of Isaiah 37 and 38, and Proverbs 15, verses 29 to 33. Isaiah 37. Hezekiah seeks the Lord's help. When King Hezekiah heard the report, he tore his clothes and put on burlap and went into the temple of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna, the court secretary, and the leading priests, all dressed in burlap, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. They told him, this is what King Hezekiah says. Today is a day of trouble, insults and disgrace. It is like when a child is ready to be born, but the mother has no strength to deliver the baby. But perhaps the Lord, your God, has heard the Assyrian chief of staff sent by the king to defy the living God and will punish him for his words. Oh, pray for those of us who are left. After King Hezekiah's officials delivered the king's message to Isaiah, the prophet replied, Say to your master, this is what the Lord says. Do not be disturbed by this blasphemous speech against me from the Assyrian king's messengers. Listen, I myself will move against him, and the king will receive a message that he is needed at home, so he will return to his land, where I will have him killed with a sword. Meanwhile, the Assyrian chief of staff left Jerusalem and went to consult the king of Assyria, who had left Lachish and was attacking Libna. Soon afterwards, King Shennacherib received word that King Tirhaka of Ethiopia was leading an army to fight against him. Before leaving to meet the attack, he sent messengers back to Hezekiah in Jerusalem with this message. This message is for King Hezekiah of Judah. Don't let your God, in whom you trust, deceive you with promises that Jerusalem will not be captured by the king of Assyria. You know perfectly well what the king of Assyria what what the kings of Assyria have done whenever wherever they have gone. They have completely destroyed everyone who stood in their way. Why should you be any different? Have the gods of other nations rescued them, such nations as Gozan, Haran, Rezeph, and the people of Eden who were in Tel Asar? My predecessors destroyed them all. What happened to the king of Hamath and the king of Arpad? What happened to the kings of Serevaim, Hena, and Ivala? After Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it, he went up to the Lord's temple and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed this prayer before the Lord. O Lord of heaven's armies, God of Israel, you are enthroned between the mighty cherubim. You alone are God of all the kingdoms of the earth. You alone created the heavens and the earth. Bend down, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Listen to Sennacherib's words of defiance against the living God. It is true, Lord, that the kings of Assyria have destroyed all these nations, and they have thrown the gods of these nations into the fire and burned them. But if the, of course the Assyrians could destroy them, they were not gods at all, only idols of wood and stone shaped by human hands. Now, our Lord, our, our, O Lord, our God, rescue us from his power. Then all the kingdoms of the earth will know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Isaiah predicts Judah's deliverance. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent this message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Because you prayed about King Shennacherib of Assyria, the Lord has spoken this word against him. The virgin daughter of Zion despises you and laughs at you. The daughter of Jerusalem shakes her head in derision as you flee. Whom have you been defying and ridiculing? Against whom did you raise your voice? At whom did you look with such haughty eyes? It was the Holy One of Israel. But your messengers you have defied. By your messengers you have defied the Lord. You have said, with my many chariots, I have conquered the highest mountains. Yet the remotest peaks of Lebanon... Yes, the remotest peaks of Lebanon. I have cut down its tallest cedars and its finest cypress trees. I have reached beneath its reached its farthest heights and explored its deepest forests. I have dug wells in many foreign lands and refreshed myself with their water. With the sole of my foot, I stopped up all the rivers of Egypt. But have you not heard? I decided this long ago. Long ago, I planned it, and now I am making it happen. I plan for you to crush fortified cities into heaps of rubble. That is why their people have so little power and are so frightened and confused. They are as weak as grass, as easily trampled as tender green shoots. They are like grass sprouting on a housetop. 
scorched before it can grow lush and tall. But I know you well, where you stay and when you come and go. I know the way you have raged against me. And because of your raging against me and your arrogance, which I have heard for myself, I will put my hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth. I will make you return by the same road on which you came. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, here is the proof that what I say is true. This year you will eat only what grows up by itself. And next year you will eat what springs up from that. But in the third year, you will plant crops and harvest them. You will tend vineyards and eat their fruit. And you, who are left in Judah, who have escaped the ravages of the siege, will put roots down in your soil, own soil and grow up and flourish. For a remnant of my people will spread out from Jerusalem, a group of survivors from Mount Zion. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. And this is what the Lord says about the king of Assyria. His armies will not enter Jerusalem. They will not even shoot an arrow at it. They will not march outside its gates with their shields, nor build banks of earth against its walls. The king will return to his own country by the same road on which he came. He will not enter this city, says the Lord. For my own honor and for the sake of my servant David, I will defend this city and protect it. That night, the angel of the Lord went out to the Assyrian camp and killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. When the surviving Assyrians woke up the next morning, they found corpses everywhere. Then King Shennacherib of Assyria broke camp and returned to his own land. He went home to his capital of Nineveh and stayed there. One day, while he was worshipping in the temple of his god, Nishrach, his sons Adramalek and Sherazar killed him with their swords. Then they escaped to the land of Ararat, and another son, Eshrahadan, became the next king of Assyria. Isaiah 38. Hezekiah's Sickness and Recovery About that time Hezekiah became deathly ill, and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, Remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. Then this message came to Isaiah from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor, David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add fifteen years to your life, and I will rescue you in the city from the king of Assyria. Yes, I will defend this city. And this is a sign from the Lord to prove that he will do as he promised. I will cause the sun's shadow to move ten steps backward on the sundial of Ahaz. So the shadow of the sundial moved backward ten steps. Hezekiah's Poem of Praise When King Hezekiah was well again, he wrote this poem. I said in the prime of my life, must I now enter the place of the dead? Am I to be robbed of the rest of my years? I said, never again will I see the Lord God, while still living in the land of the living. Never again will I see my friends or be with those who live in this world. My life has been blown away like a shepherd's tent in a storm. It has been cut short as when a weaver cuts cloth from the loom. Suddenly, my life was over. I waited patiently all night, but I was torn apart as though by lions. Suddenly, my life was over. Delirious, I chattered like a swallow or a crane, and then I moaned like a mourning dove. My eyes grew tired of looking to heaven for help. I am in trouble, Lord, help me. But what could I say? For he himself sent this sickness. Now I will walk humbly throughout my years because of this anguish I have felt. Lord, your discipline is good, for it leads to life and health. You restore my health and allow me to live. Yes, this anguish was good for me. For you have rescued me from death and forgiven all my sins. For the dead cannot praise you. They cannot raise their voices in praise. Those who go on, go down to the grave can no longer hope in your faithfulness. Only the living can praise you as I do today. Each generation tells of your faithfulness to the next. Think of it. The Lord is ready to heal me. I will sing his praises with instruments every day of my life in the temple of the Lord. Isaiah had said to Hezekiah's servants, 
Make an ointment from figs and spread it over the boil, and Hezekiah will recover. And Hezekiah had asked, What sign will prove that I will go to the temple of the Lord? Proverbs 15, verses 29 to 33. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. A cheerful look brings joy to the heart. Good news makes for good health. If you listen to the constructive criticism, you will be at home among the wise. If you reject discipline, you only harm yourself. But if you listen to correction, you grow in understanding. Fear of the Lord teaches wisdom. Humility precedes honor. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Dear Lord, direct our paths this day through your Holy Spirit. Your daughter, your servant, is it listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.